Welcome, Augies Worldwide, to another episode of Ask Dave. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and next to me is Trevor Oman, who is our Ask Dave editor. Trevor's a third year film student at BYU, will soon be going back to school, and we'll miss him uh, because he's done a lot of very good work this summer uh, on the Ask Dave. He collates them so that uh, similar questions can be answered uh, in a, a video of reasonable length. So, Trevor, what do you have? All right. <clears throat> Mark asks about his radio's noise level. Mm. That's a problem. The radio noise, mobile radio noise level will go down in volume when I pick up the mic. If I put the mic down away from my body, the noise level gets louder. Could this be a ground issue? Yes. Am I grounded with 10 gauge directly to the battery? And I believe all my coax is good. Ground it to the frame. Um, and you may have, if your vehicle has uh, different sections of frame, they may be joined together with rubber uh, things to hold down vibration and things like that. You want to put a piece of uh, uh, coax braid or ground braid across that. A um, friend of mine, Lou French, has uh, a uh, radio, HF radio in his truck and he has that ground strap all the way down through everything to make sure everything is grounded together. But uh, yes, it is a grounding issue. Um, so uh, I would uh, recommend getting a book on uh, mobile HF operation. It'll give you a good starting point for the kinds of things you need to do to reduce the noise. Joseph, call sign N4ZOO, is wondering about connecting his Yesu FTDX5000 to Signalink USB using WSGTX software. Well, it'll work. Um, my FTDX3000 has a built-in sound card, so I don't have to use the Signalink USB. I could. Uh, it would work just fine. Um, having rig control issues. Do you have a user guide or video for this? Um, I assume that you have a USB connection from your radio to your computer, okay, for rig control. And then there is another link, which is the USB signal link that's got the audio that goes into the uh, rig. Um, they should be independent of each other. And in the WSJTX software, you should be able to find uh, your radio. Now you're going to have to go into control panel. You go into control panel and look at uh, system. It's system. Um, and it lists all the devices. It might be devices that you go into. And uh, you look under the COM ports and find out which COM port the system has assigned to your FTDX3000. You want the enhanced COM port, because there will be two. You want the enhanced one. And that is what you tell the WSJTX software to use, to use that COM port. Okay? And you've got to get the uh, baud rates lined up. The baud rate for the uh, FTDX5000 is set in firmware, or not firmware, and set in the menu. So you go set that and make sure that you're matching that by going into Device Manager, looking at the COM port, double clicking on the Properties button for that, finding out what the baud rate is and get that to match. Getting these things set up the first time is a pain. Once you have them set up, they'll work just fine. Um, but that could cause the, uh, be the cause of the problem. Now the Signalink USB uh, presents uh, two kinds of connections to the radio. It's the audio and the push to talk. The push to talk is derived from the uh, uh, audio signal itself. So that should give you your push to talk. Um, 
good luck with that. Getting the radio set up the first time for uh, digital modes can be a pain. Once you get there, if you got it set up for WSJTX, it's set up for PSK31, whatever you want to do. So, sorry you're having troubles. Be persistent. Daniel has asks about the NRF24001. I have no idea what that is. Um, NordicSemi.com for two-way communication from my house to a hill approximately one kilohertz away. A direct line of sight, however, the valley's in an urban area. I guess there's all kinds of devices in the valley here which interfere with the radio signal. The device uses the one uh, 2.4 gigahertz ISM band. So it is Wi-Fi. Yes, it is definitely Wi-Fi. Okay, if the device uh, talks with the similar device, you're going to need the parabolic antenna. And um, most of the, you, you can buy uh, things that are essentially routers with the parabolic antenna. And they'll go 15, 20 miles. And so if we're not that far, you should be able to get a real nice signal lock there. You will be wanting to... Um, check with channels. There aren't that many channels on 2.4. You might try the 5 megahertz, 5 gigahertz uh, band. The dishes are physically smaller and uh, there's a lot more channels to choose from, including some in the amateur band. Um, let's see, test device, see the Arduino response. Uh, if you move the antenna like 10 centimeters to the right or left, then nothing. Also notice that me being a reflector for the device um, sometimes helps. Okay, you're dealing with some refraction somewhere. Uh, if you're scraping, if your signal path is line of sight, but it's scraping the top of the hill, that will give you what is called knife edge diffraction, and you can get some really weird interference patterns. I suggest 5 gigahertz. Um, you should be able to pick up these devices for not that much money. So, sorry about the, the issues. I'm not an expert on Wi-Fi, um, but uh, that's what I do know about it. Okay. All right. Hong asks about uh, Motorola software. Oh, we've talked about Motorola software before. It's expensive. Two Motorola radios. Which two machines use Motorola's CPS software version to program the frequency for it? I don't know. If you have the software, please give me a download link. Motorola will sell you the software. It's several hundred dollars. Um, it's not free. And Motorola is a big active company, so if somebody started distributing that for free, Motorola would be all over them with the cease and desist or a takedown letter. So um, when you're dealing with Motorola, you're dealing with a company that is used to dealing with public service agencies and a three or $400 piece of software is just noise in terms of an overall budget. But for the individual ham, it can be uh, quite something. All right, call sign K KF5YKP asks about the time, time constant tau of a capacitor. Boy, question concerning units and calculations for the time constant tau of a capacitor, which is in seconds. I'm working with the 10th edition of the ARRL Extra Class Manual, page 48, right above the figure. Note if R is in megohms and C is in microfarads, then tau is in seconds. You've got uh, R, you're multiplying by 10 to the 6th, and then C that's being multiplied by 10 to the minus 6. So the two cancel each other, and you just get unity as a result. And then in the first RC circuits example, the tau is calculated from the values of 470 kilo ohms and 220 microfarads, with the result being in seconds. Okay, so you'd have to express 470 kilo ohms in terms of megohms, so that'd be 0.47 megohms 
times 220 microfarads with the result being in seconds. Am I missing something here? Yes, that's right. It needs to be in megohms for the result to be right. So they're, what they're doing is they're playing games with, uh, you've got this rule of thumb. I would find it easier to put the uh, capacitor 220 microfarads, put it down as 220 times 10 to the minus sixth farads, and then 470 kilo ohms is 470 times 10 to the third, and so you could end up with 10 to the minus 3 uh, times 220 times 470. All right, Bill, call sign W0BX, is wondering about accessing a DMR repeater. Uh, I'm still able to access the repeater. The homebrew repeater was replaced with the Motorola recently. I would be interested in your single report from the fringe. I was surprised and pleased to see you getting into the repeater on your video. And this is from the repeater owner. Okay, well, I'm going to be testing in my next video a DMR radio. So we'll see how that works. Thank you. Okay. Jeff asks about transmitting on the Baofeng BF F8HP. Mm -hmm. Trying to communicate from my Baofeng BF F8HP to some Motorola CP2000Ds. My Motorola is of 16 channels. I have all the frequencies already in chirp. I can hear on the Baofeng, no problem, but I can't transmit in channel mode. I've discovered the only way to transmit is to add D0541 or D413 and oh, it's D054i in the menu 10 and 12 of my Baofeng. I want to be able to add these values for all 16 channels into my radio and channel mode as to not have to punch all this in every time we change channels. I use chirp for programming and do not see a column labeled for RDCS or TDCS where the values go in chirp and what do you do to remedy it. You can contact the chirp people. They're always looking to improve their product um, and check to make sure you've got a recent uh, version of it because they're changing chirp all the time. All right, Roy asks about scanning on an RDR5. Okay, watched your video on the RDR5. What is the procedure to get it to scan? Um, that's what I'd go do. Go check your programming to make sure you've got a check mark in the channels that you want to be picked up by scanning. Tony, call sign 4I1ANL, is wondering about the power reading on his external meter. Okay. Should I be concerned about lower power reading on my external meter? The three-month-old Diamond SX200 meter that is used primarily in HF. VHF. Okay, now, we've already talked about this. VHF, or HF meters won't read the right power on VHF. Okay. If you're doing the necessary calibration, surprised and worried that the meter only shows four watts for the supposed 5 watt output of the ASU FT-857. Are you sure that the diamond is set up to go that high in frequency? Further increasing the RF output shows that the meter is 2 to 3 or sometimes 5 watts lower than the indicated power in the transceiver. Do I have failing PAs in my rig? PA is power amplifier. Um, I don't know. Um, I would be leery of using a power uh, meter that's not designed uh, for VHF. Uh, if it seems to be working on the air, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, but if you are worried about it, find someone in your club who has a VHF power meter that you can trust and, and check it out. Uh, now, I would assume that you're doing FM on those um, because that would have a steady power output or CW. Single sideband of course uh, you're reading sort of the average power uh, when you're talking into the radio so you wouldn't 
get a full five watts indicated on a power meter? Will Carlson KI7OXA has asks about his FSK transmitter kit. FSK, sound like Riddy. Now here is not great and getting worse during field day 2018. And to struggle to listen over and over again for even a chance at catching call signs. This course made me frustrated and basically turned my to others. Just enough of a signal from the speaker from my ears after fire, five hours, I just gave it up. Use headphones. I gave up on speakers years ago. Use headphones so that, uh, you know, you got a, uh, on both sides, on both ears, and that it makes the sound appear like it's in the middle of your head. It is so much easier to read than over a speaker. Started thinking about Ridi and started looking for an FSK transmitter with no luck. Does an FSK transmitter kit exist at all? Well, uh, there's two ways to do Ridi. There's FSK where the radio itself does an actual frequency shift and then there's AFSK, which is audio FSK, where you feed it the signal, put it in the single sideband mode, and the device that's generating the tone in there will cause the signal to go back and forth in frequency. AFSK, uh, done right, uh, is indistinguishable from FSK. Uh, a lot of radios these days will do native FSK. Uh, you have to set the thing up uh, to do that. Uh, mine will. I've got an FTDX 3000. We'll do native FSK. But um, I just use the sound card uh, for the very rare times that I do Ridi. There are lots of other uh, modes, mostly sound card modes. PSK 31 is a great mode. Um, FT8, of course, is extremely popular. All of those you can do with a normal sideband radio. Uh, so you could use a single sideband radio to do uh, AFSK also. Uh, good luck with uh, the RIDI. Um, I will tell you all the action right now is on FT8. Um, that's, FT8 is uh, packed, too packed. Too many people are on it. Um, and uh, you can get QSOs very, very easily with that, uh, even at night. And I've seen it on six meters, uh, and when the rest of the band is dead, there's, there's activity on, uh, <laughs> activity on, on uh, FT8. Well, that concludes uh, this round of uh, Ask Dave. Remember, you can ask a question by going to hamradioanswers at gmail.com and pose your question via email or you can pose it as a comment to a YouTube video. Uh, on the YouTube video there's a good chance uh, other viewers will get to the question first before I do and provide some answers so uh, either one you want. Um, thank you for all your questions. Thank you for all your support please take a look at patreon.com slash ke0og. It's uh, where, if you want to be a patron of Ham Radio Answers, uh, you can provide a dollar or two every month and uh, help make this a viewer-supported channel. Uh, if you'd like to go to the tip jar, you can go to uh, decastler.com slash tip hyphen jar. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, op, uh, operating and listening and and uh, making this channel better and so until we next meet 73